So I played sports when I was a kid, just like I'm sure a lot of you guys did. Um, I wanted to, like most kids, become successful in the sports field, right? Whether it was football, basketball, baseball, I played golf, I ran track. Um, I was I was an athlete, uh, and specifically football. My dad, he played college football, and it was always something uh, that I was passionate about. It was something that I could do with my dad. It was something that I was genuinely good at, and so I found an interest in it. I uh, just remembered I don't waste your guys' time, so I'm going to keep this here. But throughout the process of sports, I came to find a love for winning, right? Becoming successful. And it wasn't necessarily the love for being success, more of the hate of losing. See, what I found is I genuinely hate losing. I hate being on the downside of a game or a competition. And I don't know if that's just me or if genuinely everybody just has a pure hatred for losing. I, I obviously assume most people do, but dude, I hated it. And so I realized that the more work that I put in, yes, the more winning I would get, but it would also result in less losing that I would get. Just like video games, right? I played a ton of video games. Me and my friends, dude, I love Minecraft. I love Legos, and then I love Minecraft, but Minecraft wasn't really a win or loss. Ark Survival Evolved. I don't know if you guys know what that game is, but we played that for hours. Like, okay, we played that for days, years, but literal like game time played, I know my friends, I didn't play as much as them because I was in sports, but I had to have at least a full month of actual in-game playtime, like 30 days of my life when I was 16 years old, when I could have been doing other things, I was playing video games. And the reason why we did that, the reason why I put so much time in there is because we could win. The more time we invested in these video games, the more winning we would have, which means the less losing we would have reason why we quit is because we lost so bad that it's it deleted all of that time and it was just devastating so we stopped playing and, and which was amazing for me now looking back but all of these things man I just enjoyed winning doing the thing in order to like not lose and then I ended up getting recruited, got an injury um, my senior year of football and didn't end up going playing for college um, just because I didn't think that was the path for me. I wasn't going to go to the NFL. I wasn't going to get paid for it. So I kind of assumed it would be a waste of time. Looking back, I don't regret anything. But damn, my college was rough. I ended up going to San Diego State and... In that time, I had nothing to do, really and truly, because I was in sports all of the time. I was a five-sport athlete. I played everything that there that I could. And then not only that, I was well in academics, and I was involved in philanthropy, and I did so much in high school that I thought college was my time to now take a break and chill. And I still lifted, and I still worked out, but ultimately... My college experience led me down a path that I hope and pray that no one else goes down. See, I started to be involved with the group and trying to fit in. I knew no one around. I moved from a small town, Midland, Texas, out to San Diego, California, where there's girls, there's beaches, there's drinks, there's drugs. This Tijuana is literally a 15-minute drive from campus. And I became engulfed in this status game of trying to get into the certain groups and trying to level up. And once again, I hated losing and I hated being told that I couldn't get into things. I couldn't, I wasn't allowed. 
because I wasn't good enough. So once again, this game now of me trying not to lose, I became engulfed in, but this one was toxic. Fitting in, trying to work to be the guy that was best in this group, but then the best with girls, and then could hold my alcohol the longest, and all of these things just combined to make me a person that I didn't want to be. Luckily in this process, it was 2020, I was a freshman and obviously the whole pandemic hit and kind of set my reality back into place. That was one of the best things that could happen for me just because I was going down such a dark path that I needed a gut check. I needed that reality check. So during that time, I read the book, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Man, I would recommend that for any man that is going through a struggle that is just not quite on their path that maybe feels like lost like I was in college. That book pushed me to start working out more, start training, start pushing my body, start testing my limits. And I was in, I was just isolated because I didn't have groups to go into anymore because you couldn't even go out. And so I ended up signing, I went on Google and searched hardest race in the world to complete. Sure enough, if you do that, I haven't done it lately, but if you do, pops up the Ironman. So I signed up for one. It was eight months away and I paid the money and started training for an Ironman. Never have I ever done a marathon, never have I ever done a triathlon. I haven't done any of these things, but I could see somehow that book gave me a vision to this life that I didn't want to go down. And I knew the only way out was going to be me testing my limits. So I did that. Eight months of training went by and it put me into the shape that I needed to be to start thinking clearly and changing my life changing my trajectory of life. I completed the Ironman and the accomplishment that I gained from doing that, committing to a race and completing it that was completely outside of my realm of possibility gave me the confidence, gave me the truth to go out and push my limits even more. After that, I started creating my own business, my fitness business. I helped training people. In that time, I developed a social media presence. I started training people. I started getting people successful results, started becoming fulfilled in that because now I'm changing other people's lives. Then I started to compound this and all of this, all of a sudden the success was like a snowball where I was just destroyed. And little by little, the discipline that I built created this effect that helped me have an impact on thousands of people. And now I talk to friends, to family members, and I'm looked at as successful. Do I feel successful? No, I don't. But other people deem me as successful. And so then you start getting in this falsehood of reality, like, wait, like, what did I, what happened? And it's all so fast. Like, that was four years ago now. And so thinking back on that time, I was lost. I needed something else. I found it. And now I'm to a point to where I'm comfortable and can think on other things. I'm now at a level where I have my basic needs met. I can now start getting more creative, start taking on new tasks, start traveling more, gathering new ideas so I can like figure out my life and what I want to be, my purpose. And this is where a girl came into my life and completely changed it. About a year ago, really truly figured out what love is and what being selfless is. Because before that, everything was for myself. It was for my future, the things I wanted to do, the person I wanted to be. And this girl 
She changed my life. She reintroduced me into God and religion and Christianity and showed me what it is to really and truly feel as a human being, but to love one another. And so in this video, I wanted to try to share that story with you guys, to be completely vulnerable with you guys in a way in which I really haven't on social media at all. Because the reality of it is that social media is not much social. It's just media. And I feel like YouTube is one of these platforms where you can still be authentic. You can still talk about how being successful is not really all what it's made out to be. Like, the reality is that I'm in this room talking to a camera with not much friends, not much things going on. But the cool part is that I'm helping other people change their lives. And I'm doing that in a way in which I feel good because I have a purpose on this earth now. I have a reason to be here. So I urge any of you guys who maybe are lost or haven't found your purpose or don't know quite where you're going to really and truly dive into what it means to be disciplined, to work on yourself in your own meaning of what it is to be human. Start waking up in the morning even though you don't want to. Start going for a run or maybe missing out on that party or whatever it is that you don't feel like you want to do, but you know you need to. I can promise you that is going to get you so much further in this life. It is going to allow you to have so much more fulfillment to a point to where people are going to look at you as successful. And so I hope this video was um, helped you out in a way. I want it to feel like it's kind of me just talking uh, on a Zoom almost to you directly uh, because I do want to help you guys. I'm documenting these videos and trying to make these things in order for you to succeed. Because guys, being successful is not that difficult. In reality, it's doing the small things that you don't want to over a daily basis till you build up to a point to where it becomes second nature. So I hope you found value in this video. I want to thank you for staying till the end. Catch you guys on the next one.